Okay, in this video we're going to briefly go over how to uh, load a set of actions into the actions palette of Adobe Photoshop and discuss a few other points regarding the actions palette itself. Now this video is primarily for those new to Adobe Photoshop or those uh, new to actions or with very limited experience uh, using them. Now to load a set of actions the first thing you'll need to do is make sure the actions palette itself is visible. Okay, if it's not, just go to Window and select Actions, and there you have it. Now, to load a new set of actions that you've just purchased or downloaded from the Internet, uh, you're going to want to click the icon in the upper right-hand corner of the Actions palette and select Load Actions. Now, when the load box opens, you're going to need to navigate to wherever those actions are that you want to load. Uh, in this case, we're going to load the P Shop Magic Vintage Textures actions and just double click it. Now you'll see the action has loaded at the bottom of your actions palette uh, in a folder. In order to access and use the actions that you have just loaded, you'll need to expand that folder. Now to run an action, all you need to do is, well, make sure that you have an image open in Photoshop, and then click the intended action you'd like to run, and then click the play button at the bottom of the actions palette, and the action will run. Now a couple things I'd like to point out. Um, if an action has been running correctly for you for, you know, quite some time, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're getting errors. You know, doesn't matter what you do. You're getting one error or another error, and you can't seem to figure out what the problem is. Chances are good that you have unchecked a few of these check marks in the actions palette, or a few of these uh, modal boxes have been turned off. If that's the case, the easiest way to fix it is just to delete the actions and to reload a fresh set. And to delete a set of actions, all you need to do is to select it and drag it to the trash can at the bottom of the actions palette. And then you would just repeat the same steps to load a new set of actions. And the last thing I'd like to point out is that um, some software, especially some color separation software, that includes actions will require the user to run the actions palette in button mode. Okay, This is just a different way the actions palette can be accessed. Whereas opposed to, let's say, expanding the folder, clicking the action, and then clicking the play button, in button mode, all you need to do is click that button once, and that action will, uh, you know, begin running. Button mode is good and bad, okay? Uh, it's good because uh, it kind of simplifies the actions, the palette a little bit. It's a one-click and go type of deal, uh, but if you have a lot of actions installed, button mode can get pretty, uh, pretty confusing uh, because you're just going to have this endless array of multicolor buttons in your actions palette. So, what I suggest for you to do is, let's say if you have a, a set of color separation software, something like Ultraseps or Quickseps, okay? If you use Ultraseps a lot and you run it in button mode, leave it at the top of your actions palette. This way, when you run, want to run Ultraseps or any part of it, you know it's at the top. So when you switch to button mode, it's right here and there's no confusion. And then when you want to run some of your other actions, you may have 10 or 15 or 20 sets of actions. You could just switch from button mode back to folder view here and then uh, run whatever actions you like. And that's about it. There's really not too much to know uh, about actions, but if there is anything here that you didn't understand completely, just uh, drop me an email and I'll be more than happy to help out. Thank you very much.